Hello Internet, today we're going to be looking at X-Unit testing. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at how to write an X-Unit theory. So X-Unit is a .NET uh, C-sharp based unit testing framework. The idea is you write tests, you can either write facts, which test specific things, or theories, which test a broader set of things. So we're going to be looking at theories because that, that's what I need to use. Uh, so this project is something that I'm working on in my own time. It's a, it's a little something that I'm doing. You'll, you'll see more of it once it gets closer to release. But uh, for now, we need to add some additional tests for this rectangle class that I have. So I have two already here, and we'll kind of walk through what these do, write our own, and then we'll kind of talk through that. So these are theories in XUnit. They're marked by these attributes, or annotations, attributes, attributes. <laughs> And so the way this works is you give it a theory and then a set of data elements. And each of these data elements defines a test. So if I were to run these now, I uh, hope they still all pass. I haven't actually tested. But uh, the way this works, each of those lines becomes its own individual test. And they'll be displayed on their own separate line. And so each of these elements here maps to this. So this zero here is representing the left value. And it just goes that way. And you, so you can see all of them passed. We have a few tests here and a few more here just for testing rectangles. But you can see uh, when we actually run this, we're, it, you can actually see what values are passed in. It shows them here. So it says left is equal to zero, top is equal to zero, what, all of that. And so what we need to do is actually write one of these. So what I want to be able to do is these rectangles are immutable classes that store uh, the top and the left position as well as the a width and the height. And then from there, you can actually determine the everything about a rectangle. It gives you a screen space. So I want to add a translation so we can actually move it in this. And so the idea here is we're just going to create a theory that says uh, let's actually, let's write the method first and say, this is, I, I'm questioning the naming of these methods. I'm still figuring out XUnit. I'm, a, a lot of my web dev stuff has been in Java lately, so I'm still figuring this whole thing out, but we're going to give it a rectangle. So I'll just define that here. There's the five or four characteristics, top left, top, width, and height. And then we're also going to give it a translate x and a translate y. And then the final uh, result is going to be our result left, our result top, and then our result width. Uh, actually, I don't think we need a result width or a result height. I'm going to pass them in, but part of the test is going to ensure that they don't change. It's not going to assume anything else. And so the way this works is you give an assert statement and say assert and say maybe it's equal. Uh, there's a number of things here. It's really important that you get you use the correct one and actually use it in the correct way. So it's going to be the, res the expected result and then what you actually got in that order. And so we're going to be expecting our result left equal to our left value. And so this is going to say, I am expecting that the left value is going to be equal to the result left. If they're not, you're going to get an error. And so this obviously isn't going to work. Uh, if we're actually expecting to translate, since we don't have a translate function, we aren't actually translating. We're not expecting these to pass. And so we'll kind of get a chance to see what that looks like. So I'll add those here. And then I also want to assure, assert that our width is equal to our width. That should be clear. But effectively, what I'm saying is I want our new rectangles translated width not to change. So we're going to have to go back and update this, but I'm going to add it for our height as well. My hair is getting all over the place. It's quite annoying. <laughs> and 
And so we'll do that for the height as well. And that should be all four of our major tests. But if I run this right now, we're not going to see anything because there's, there's no data here. There's nothing to actually test. And so there's a number of places you can get data. You can source it from a database. You can source it from a CSV file or XML or something. The easiest way is just this inline data like I use here. And then like I covered, it just maps it automatically to your thing. So the first thing is going to be the left. So if we start and let's just say test the null case. So if I don't do anything, uh, <laughs> this part gets a little bit uh, hairy. I wonder if there's probably a better way to do that so that they actually have names. Uh, I'll have to search that. But effectively, these first four are the inputs. The next two are the translations. And the last four are the expected results. Since we're not actually doing anything to it, this should still pass. So if I run this, we should see another test pop up there. And it should be passing. But this test is specifically there just to make sure that no nothing like this happens. Wait, what? Oh, I gave it the, the width and the height again as the results. So we can take that back out, rerun this. That should actually work. We're not giving it excess parameters anymore. And now this test should be passing, and it is. Uh, it's right, right here. And so you can see down in the bottom, it's, it gives you a test pass. It has a, an elapsed time for it. But there's not really anything extra there. So we're not learning any additional information and we don't really need to it. The test passes. We know that this is true. So when it gets interesting is if I say add another one of these. And so let's take this and translate it. So we'll give it, make it a 16 by 16 image or whatever, 16 by 16 rectangle starting in the top left at zero, zero. And so when I translate that by 16, I expect the top and the uh, left to be at 16 now. I expect them to have moved over 16 pixels in both of those. And so in order to get that working, ha, we're going to need to actually implement this. Because if I run this right now, what's going to happen is we're going to see that result left is not equal to result left, or is not equal to the left. And if I click this now, uh, that might be really small for you. I don't know how to scale up this particular window, unfortunately, but it's saying it's giving us what failed. It's saying uh, assert equal fail. And then the expected was 16 and the actual was zero. And so that's coming here. And there's an, another optional parameter here. And this would be say our left translation. So if I add this, uh, that might be in the wrong place. Uh, looks like it. Oh, come on. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? It doesn't have a string. Is there like an R equal? No. Well, OK, I lied. Huh. I used to, I, I remember there being a, a way to label these so that it, it showed you more information, but apparently I, I misremember. Uh, so now that we have that, we need to actually implement this. So what I want to do is say, given a rectangle equal to our new rectangle with left, top, width, and height, the initial parameters, the translated rectangle should equal that rectangle dot translate by our translate X and translate Y. And so when I translate this, I'm now expecting my translated dot left and my translated dot top and then my 
uh, translated with. Ah, <laughs> this is going well. There we go. And uh, the height as well. So I'm expecting all of these, capital H, to now equal what I gave it there. So this is effectively saying neither of those translated height or width should change. And then the top and the left should be translated based off of the result. So they should equal the expected result and not the initial. The problem is translate doesn't exist. Not a thing that we can do. So I'm going to actually copy this and just pull it into this project over here. And so, like I said, all of these rectangles are immutable types and the rectangle I have set up so it is strictly just the data. So it only has the coordinates. There's no, all of these other functions are all helper functions that are added outside of that. So that's what we're doing here is actually defining all of those extension methods, all of those ways to extend it. Uh, and that way it's kind of a, a something that can be expanded on. We know the data type is separate. And so if the data changes, the extension methods may or may not change, but we they're not connected necessarily. And so the way this is going to work is we're just going to return a new rectangle like this. Yeah, and, oh, that's not right. We need to accept our original rectangle. So just normal extension method stuff. We're gonna take an input rectangle and then I believe this is working on integers. So it's going to be an int translate X and an int translate Y. We're gonna translate both of those. And now we need to take the translation, which is going to be the rectangle.x or rectangle.left plus our translate x and then our rectangle.top plus our translate y and then we're going to also want to just grab that rectangle.width and rectangle.height and now this should just work <laughs> hopefully and so now both of our test cases should pass. We shouldn't be affecting our height or our width, but now our rectangle should be translated. And so we should have a passing test that actually, yeah, does that. So this way, we now have two test cases. One was already passing. It was just basic and not doing anything. The other one is actually translating things. Uh, I'm gonna add two other quick ones one to just do the y so this is going to translate it on the y-axis and only affect the y-axis and the other one is going to only translate the x just to make sure neither of them are overlapping like it would be possible if uh like just as an example one of the reason test cases like having test completion is important, not just coverage, but completion uh, with the tests that I had written, it was possible for me to say, do something like this and say the rectangle dot left plus the translate Y and the rectangle dot top plus the translate X with the tests that I have written, this should still pass. And so that's part of uh, part of the problem is when you do something like that, it can kind of give you a false positive, false sense of security, because this is still wrong. This still doesn't work, but our tests say it does. And so you kind of have to be a little bit, a little bit concerned about that or consider it a little bit. But now, uh, unless I, did I correct that? I don't think I did. So these should fail now. And now we know, oops, we swapped them. We need to, we need to do something better. And so we can fix those, swap them back, rerun our tests, and everything should be good. And so this is, I, I guess, the point of theory is it's sort of when you're trying to get these functions working, when you have multiple inputs and outputs, you want something where you can kind of run through multiple tests without having to manually rewrite each test each time. Because like some of these have, like this one has five cases, this one has three. This one has 
like eight. <laughs> and so you don't want to write a new test, even though there are, there are two lines, copying and pasting that eight times is a pain because what ends up happening is, let's say I need to update <laughs> this test for whatever reason. If I need to change that, say the code changes or the function changes or whatever, I now have to change that in eight places instead of just the one place. And so that's one of the advantages. So I guess that's sort of the overview of theories. It's, so, it's sort of a, a really basic thing. A lot of testing frameworks have similar stuff to this. Uh, we'll probably cover a few of those in the future. So yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know what you thought uh, in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I don't know. If there's anything else you guys want to see, let me know in the comments as well. Uh, those I'm always looking for new ideas. Uh, let me know how this video worked. I recently got a new graphics card and I haven't recorded a video on it yet. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see. But yeah, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you internet.